Go. Ladies and gentlemen, Greg of a moment sent us in the belly! Hell yeah. Yes, sir! Hell yeah. Greg, for those that may not know who you are, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment and plug or promote anything you'd like. Uh, my name is Greg Molina. I am the lead vocalist of a new band called A Moment's Notice based out of Sacramento, California. Uh, and I'm born and raised from here, so. Been doing our thing. What's up? What's all the social media so everybody knows where to follow? Uh, it's all a moment's notice official minus in, uh, Twitter, which is a moment's notice official, but it's underscore. How many bands were you in prior to this one? <laughs> this is gonna be funny. Two. Just two. Just two. Anything that we that we have heard of, and were you the vocalist in both of those bands, or did you play a different instrument? I uh, no, actually. Uh, those bands, I was a vocalist, and at one point, I was actually the uh, bassist of another band. Nothing really too big. It was actually more underground stuff than anything. Uh, played bass for a hardcore band and out in Tennessee for a couple months. Played a one-off show, and then the band disbanded, and that was like pretty much like the last ditch effort of us, like of me trying to make music. It's been about thirteen years of me trying to get back into it since I was a teenager, and it never seemed to work out until a moment's notice. Did you did you start in Tennessee and move to SAC, or you just went to Tennessee just for that one project? Uh, no, I was actually in the military, so I spent a, a few years in the military and ended up joining a band when I was out in Tennessee because I got into the hardcore scene. And I was like, dude, like I'm so vibing with this, and I was having a good time. So somebody was like, hey, man, um, you want to join this band? And I was like, sure. And I, he's like, you used to be a, a bassist, right? And I was like, yeah, I used to play bass. And so got myself a rig all over again, and then I started playing, and then one thing led to another, played a played a really good one show with those guys. And then uh, it was all a bunch of veterans and we all kind of just time. <laughs> time just didn't work out for us. And we were just like, yeah, we can't do it. Well, first, thank you for your service, sir. I appreciate, hey, it. Man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. For those that may not know what your band sounds like, let's throw on offerings. But what does offerings mean to you from a, a vocal lyrical perspective? Um. Offerings was kind of like my way of saying, hey, I know it's been a long time, but like this is like I, I say in the song, I say this is our offering. And I'm literally saying like this is the moment, like this is what I was trying to do for years. And the song is really about just saying that people that tell you you can't do something, you won't do it or you shouldn't like to tell them like, you know, in figurative speech like get the blade off of me like take it away stop trying to kill my dreams and like let me do me and that's what this song is about and I, I'm, we're so thrilled this was our first song as a band after it was a solo project and i'm i this song means everything to me this is kind of where it all started random question but are you at a tattoo shop i am actually at my house it looks like a bunch of like supplies and stuff that would be found in a tattoo shop area behind you uh my i'm an esthetician so i do skincare but my wife okay actually makes sense tattoos. okay okay so, so I, it's a combo of items back there that apply okay so i'm not too far off no, it. you're right <laughs> right there how did you meet everyone else in the band Dude, this is actually the funniest story. Uh, Jordan and I had started this uh, this kind of like project, and we didn't know what to call it yet. And Nick Miller was helping us write music. And Silver Lining and Endless Waltz were Nick Miller on guitar, um, just writing the music for us. And uh, Jordan and I were filling in bass and, and uh, drums. And we threw them up, and we were just hoping to see like, all right, we're going to do an internet thing, see if people like it. And the first song hit a thousand streams and we were like, okay, well, we got something going on. And then David, our, uh, our lead guitarist, he actually joined with another guy named Zarin at the time. And Zarin was one of my good friends who I had grown up with. Um, he ended up leaving, but David stayed and David was brought in by Zarin. So we kind of started shopping around for guitarists and a bassist and 
uh, we ended up picking up Johnny because Johnny had hit me up. Um, he actually played Silver Lining from ear and he just started riffing it out and he sent it to me. He's like, hey man, do you guys need another guitarist? And I was like, holy shit, this guy literally just learned our whole entire song by ear. And I was like, yes, totally. Um, so we met up with him and then we were like, dude, we need to find a bassist. And it wasn't until we were about to go into the studio for offerings that he says, hey, my buddy Sergio is out of a band. He hasn't done anything in a while. He's kind of bored. He wants to do something. He's a guitarist though. And I said, hey, do you want to play bass? And he's like, I've never played. And I was like, I've got a bass. Do you want to play it? And he's like, dude, I'm down. And that's kind of how it all happened. And since then, it's kind of just been history with us. Like we don't, <laughs> none of it was supposed to work the way it did, but it did. So he is just a gifted guitarist who can hear any, anything by ear and just knows where to find a note on a guitar. Never picked up a bass. You're like, bro, this is an emergency. We're going to swift swap you over here. And everything is going to be glorious. And that's just how it is. Yeah, like, dude. I it love it. It worked out so well. <laughs> I love it. How did you meet Nick, though, from, from Skylet? Okay, so Nick, um, I was talking to my wife and Jared from Suffocate, the original vocalist. And my wife was like, you need to get back into this. Like, you need to get back into music. And I was like, I don't know. And then she was like, kind of like poking at me, like, come on, you know you want to do it. And I was like, I don't know. And then uh, Jared, I sent him a Lorna Shore cover and instantly Jared's like, what in the hell are you doing? He's like, you need to be in a band. And I was like, man, I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, maybe one day. And then he's like, I was like, finding members is impossible. He's like, hit up Nick. And I was like, I have not talked to Nick in years. I haven't seen or talked to Nick in probably since I was a teenager. And I was like, I highly doubt he's going to remember me. We started talking and then Nick was like, dude, Jared said you're going to the studio. And I was like, no, I'm not. And then he's like, they both kind of like collabed and were like, today's the day you're going. And I was like, well, shit. All right, I guess I'm going. And that's that's kind of how it all started. And then Nick's been producing us since. And he actually manages us now, so. So you didn't, you didn't know <clears throat> like lyrically what you were going to do that day when you showed up at Nick's? Or you kind of like a day or two before, a couple of days before had heard the demo and you just heard it for the first time at Nick's Nick's spot. Nick and I literally wrote "Silver Lining" in nine hours. Really? <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Yeah! Nick and I. <laughs> Nick and I literally sat there for nine hours, and we just started shredding stuff, and we we're like, "Yo, dude, let's come up with something." And Nick and I were just like, "We were, we got a groove, and we just kept going." And we we're like, "Dude, yes." That is so and, cool. Uh, it's way different than what we do now, but like. It was such a cool experience, and then, yeah, we just kept, and then we did it again for Endless Waltz. Endless Waltz was wrote in about eight and a half, nine hours. Hell yeah. Uh, I do want to play another song off of Lotus. I want to play which one you're most proud of overall, but before you say, I do want to do some trivia also, but here's the Ooh. kicker. You get to pick the trivia, but if I stump you, you don't have to do this, but are you willing to take a swig of hot sauce? I'm assuming you have hot sauce in your house. Oh, yeah. I, I've got some hot sauce. I don't know what. I've I got I, 13 other hot sauces right next to me. So we'll just we'll randomly pick one. But here's the thing. You get to pick the topic in the trivia. What movie or TV show your wife in the background and we can kind of see but kind of can can also help. What movie <laughs> or TV show have you seen the most? Where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get it wrong. Um, if you want to think about it, first tell Phantom, me, first tell Phantom, me Phantom uh, what song, what is it? Phantom Menace, uh, Star Wars. Got you. Heard. Uh, what song off Lotus were you playing while I look up some Star Wars Phantom Menace trivia? Uh, dude, honestly, Timekeeper. <laughs> Timekeeper is such a banger. I love that song so much. Damn it. Here we go. If you guys are feeling it, by the way, please go on Spotify. Hit that follow button! I'd already previously liked this one when when going through the EPIC. What is, what is Timekeeper about, though? Timekeeper is about people telling me that uh, there's a lyric in there, and it's very specific. So you know how people gatekeep. There are people that say, you are past your prime. 
you're too old. You can't do this anymore. There's a lyric in there, and I say, washed up irrelevant is what they said. Well, show me how you do in my stead. Sheeps and wolves clothing should sit in their loathing. And uh, it's talking about all the people that just act way tougher than they are and tell you, like, they, they time keep. They tell you, oh, dude, you're over your 30s, man. Like, go raise a family. Do whatever. Like, don't ban stuff. Like, nah. Like, and... I got a lot of that actually in the beginning of this. A lot of people were like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, don't you have a family, a kid and all that? Like, but my family's super supportive. My son was literally headbanging at my show last, like on Saturday. I saw those pictures. That's awesome. That is a cool feeling for sure. Yeah. Like, so it's like, you know, I always tell people like, don't time keep anybody out of their, like what they're passionate about. Like time keepers is my way of saying like gatekeeping. But for me, it's for time. Cause I feel like that's more of a topic than anything for me. I had the trivia ready, but I don't want to forget a chat question that's coming in. Uh, when Evan flew out to visit you, is that when he recorded? So this is dreaming. No, I wish it was man, dude. That was, a. Uh, Evan and I had kind of talked about that song for ooh, God since, uh, almost offer. Yeah. When offerings had dropped, Evan and I had talked about it. Um, the song was already wrote. We were just working on it a lot. And uh, Evan and I were bouncing back and forth lyrics and we were trying to figure out like what we were going to do. And um, we finally got it solidified. And then I was like, hey, Evan, what do you think about this? And uh, Evan and I FaceTimed for a while and we kind of went over lyrics and were, we wrote So This Is Dreaming together. Um, the chorus and everything was both of us collabed and we he had recorded it over on the east coast and then he sent it all over to us and then nick and i sat down in the studio with everyone else and then we put it all together and mastered it and then the rest was history and that's honestly like that was such a fun collab and it was so nice to like have him come out here when he flew out and you know do that whole entire show with us that was yeah he's so awesome dude he is awesome dude i'm about to stump you so uh you might as well go ahead and get that hot sauce ready here we go no, for real, usually the first one is easier than the second one. Right, the first one is how I judge how much you know about, about Star Wars. Here we go. In The Phantom Menace, what is C-3PO missing when Anakin turns him on? His eyeball. His eyeball is yeah, correct. Yeah. I'll do the hot sauce, pick a number one through 12. We're also spinning the wheel for you. Oh, that's boring. That's boring. But pick a number one through 12. Um, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've picked Mount Fuji Magma Hot Sauce, and it is pretty damn hot. <laughs> oh, Luckily, I get a swig of water right afterwards. <laughs> Whew. I'll try and stump you again, but how was how was the, uh, the big ASD show? Oh, my God. That was that was. That was a dream to play with the Skylight Drive. Um, we actually were direct support for them. So that's our second show in a row that we have been direct support for uh, a pretty big band. Um, playing with the Skylight Drive was, it was kind of surreal because I had been working with Nick for over a year now. It was, you know, a 16 year old me could not have predicted that, let alone predict, predicted it for this band. Did he help we, set up the, the Swan Fest uh, interaction? Uh, kind of. That was actually Jordan Blake that kind of did that. And Jordan Blake asked me like 24 hours in advance for that. And I was like, um, hmm. And I, I was so nervous. And like, I totally choked that whole performance. I strained and everything. I was, I was terrified. I looked up and I saw 5,000 people and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, I thought you did all right. It sounded pretty good to me. But yeah, that's, I imagine that was a wild experience. Yeah, I looked up and didn't see the end of the crowd and was like, this is this is a lot. And that was the first interaction I had. That is cool. That is very cool. Uh, um, yeah, the ASD show was incredible. And uh, a lot happened uh, Saturday night. Uh, we had a lot of new fans. So I'm, I, I'm so thrilled that there's so many people that are into us. Like, 
I never, none of us expected it, like, to be honest. Like, we didn't know if anybody was really going to like us as much as people have been talking about us. And everything's getting so received so well, and we're just so excited. What do you guys have planned the rest of the year that you're allowed to tell us about or something maybe early 2023? I know sometimes stuff isn't allowed to be. Yeah. You know, it's all, it's, it's all timing, but what are you allowed to tell us? Okay, so what I'm allowed to tell you right now is we are currently getting ready to release another song for our LP. What's going to be on the LP? Um, we ended up playing it Saturday night. If you were there, it's called End the Cycle. It'll be the first song that we released from the EP. It'll be next month. Um, we are headlining a show next month. We haven't announced it yet, but we, we just confirmed it. Um up here in sacramento and then we are also going to be playing another show in december but details are going to be released at another date um next year we are going on tour with memoir and everglade what? as a uh, avian and uh that'll be our first tour uh and this has been actually eight months in the process we actually have been talking about it since before lotus had even dropped so that is we're, amazing. Uh, we're getting ready to hit the road. So, um, and more to come. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, there are people we're talking to and things that we're doing, but we're kind of keeping it hush hush for net for now. But just stay tuned. Hit the follow button on all our social media. If you go on our Spotify, you can find all of our social media on there too, and it'll take you right to it. And there's always updates, so we're always updating everybody. So. If you want to find anything out on us, just click one of those links and you'll find anything. Southern California is is included in this tour? Uh, this one isn't because we couldn't get the date booked. Damn it! And I'm super bummed. Just kidding. Uh, but we are playing in Vegas. So if you want to hop, skip, and a jump over yes. to Vegas, yes. we are playing our last date on the tour is in Vegas. I'm always looking for a reason to go to Vegas, uh, and that's that's not announced yet. When when what you're what you're referring no, we, to? We uh, we literally just announced it. I think tickets are going on sale um, in November for all the venues. Is what they we've been told. So okay, I'm gonna look into it. I have to convince the wife, but I'm gonna find a way to leave the kids, leave the wife, go hang out with some awesome bands, party with Greg at a moment's notice, and uh, drink some beers, and of course smoke some doobies. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! I have plenty of Jones sodas for you, Mary Jones though. Okay, <laughs> uh, this one for sure is gonna stump you. Maybe. This is my Maybe. redemption, my redemption trivia to you. Now that I know you, you have seen Phantom Menace a couple of times. In the Phantom Menace, what is the name of the pod race Anakin enters where he ends up winning? What is the name of the pod race? Second question is always harder. It's two words. That's your only hint. Most Eisley? What is your guess? Is it Most Eisley? My friend, that is a stump. Damn. That is, in fact, Damn. not even close. The answer is Bunta Eve. Go get the hot sauce. Okay. Okay. Aaron, this one's going to you for getting it right in chat. We got him. Gotcha, bitch. It's hard. It's hard to stump. Uh, guys, if you're having fun hanging out with uh, with a moment's notice, we only have a little bit more time. We have a couple more questions. Please, please support them. Hit the follow button. Greg's awesome out of Sacramento. Hopefully, if we get him down here in Southern California soon. Lizzie, hit blocks. Somebody block her. Block. I'm going to throw in So This okay. Is Dreaming real quick. I got to throw in one more real quick. I got to. This is Dreaming. Off the Lotus EP. Greg, I have two final questions for you. The first one is what artist would you let's pretend money doesn't matter. This artist will say, I'll do it for free. What is your dream collab vocalist on track? 
I gotta say the vocalist of the Ghost Inside. I'm sorry it, to anybody else, but it's always gonna be him. No good call. What. That uh, their their music in particular, like it just meant something to you. Um, in 2016, I when I was in the military, I actually jumped out of an airplane for my 75th time, and uh, blew both of my knees out and slipped a disc in my back and lost the ability to walk. And it was right around the time that the ghost inside had had their accident. Really? They were in recovery. And um, watching the ghost inside kind of do what they did was like, wow, it's incredible. And then when they came out with um, Aftermath, I was like, that, that whole album got me through so much that I was like, it meant something so dear to me. And so if I ever got the chance to even play a show or talk to any of them, it would not even collab. It would just mean the world for me to just talk to them and tell them like they were the reason, like, I would be like, you know, they say from the ashes brought back to life. That's what they did for me. If I, if I ever get them on the show, I'll do my best to remember. And you're my co-host that day. If, so if that's down. cool with you, if that's cool with you. I'm 100%. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to try and work on it. I, I have a follow-up question, though. So you said you yeah. you had jumped 75 times and then this accident occurred? Yep. How does how does this accident occur as a somewhat expert at that point of jumping? Was there like a malfunction of some kind? Uh, I jumped on what's called a red light. And when you jump out on a red light, usually there's some sort of hazard. At that time, there was strong winds. And I started what's called oscillating, where the parachute starts doing this. And when I got out of it, out of the heat pocket, which is like there's pockets of air, when I got out of it, I kept oscillating all the way down. And I couldn't solidify like my like stationary position. And my leg landed in a pothole, so my hips shifted like this. And my the disc of my spine slipped and this leg got ripped and the chute went that way so everything got yanked in two different directions oh my gosh well i'm yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're here and you're and you're rocking and rolling now that's 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 wild dude it's crazy yeah, yeah um, it was a, not a fun day let's go let's switch it up to the final question first of all thank you for your time this is a lot of fun uh, my final question, and it's a serious one, is uh, what is a piece of musical advice somebody in the industry has has given you that kind of made you take your career more seriously? Like they directly told you something or the worst mistake you ever made as an artist that you don't want uh, a starting up garage band to make? Never stop. You're going to eat a lot of dirt before you actually get to have that beer. I, if I could give myself advice from 13 years ago, I would have said, keep going. Like, keep eating dirt for a little bit longer because it's going to pay off. Because I, I think that 13 years ago, I probably had a really good chance of doing something really great. But everything happens for a reason. But don't ever give up. If you if you want this and, and you want it bad enough, just keep practicing. Invest in yourself and always just keep going. You just don't, never give up. Always like strive to like make connections and do the best you can. That's all music is about, you know. Do do what you can and and love what you do at the same time, and never let anything stop you from it. Well said, sir. We look forward to the new single. We look forward to the tour dates announcement. I'll do my best to get into Vegas. I don't know how how likely I am to do it without super huge notice, but I'm gonna try. But uh, this is a lot of fun, Greg. I appreciate it. Please come yeah. to Sal Southern California soon so we can catch the live show. And uh, don't. I'll try. I'll try my best, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try as best to get down there. Excellent. Uh, don't be a stranger. You're welcome back anytime, man. This is a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. Greg of a moment notice. Give me a hell yeah. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. Done, dude.